Now we take our time machine back to a problem we've seen in Calculus 2, but also at the beginning of this course, one of our motivating problems. Uh, and that is, we wish to drill a hole in a sphere. And we want to do this in such a way that we remove exactly half of the volume of the sphere. So how do we do this? How big should this hole be that we drill? So our picture for this situation is as follows. We have our sphere. Maybe I'll draw the whole sphere first. And then we want to drill a hole through it. Basically from North Pole to South Pole. So after we drill that hole, what we're going to end up getting is you know, this portion of a sphere. And then we've got this hole drilled out. this and I'll try to get rid of the gray lines. This is our hole we've just drilled out of the middle of our sphere. Put some coordinate axes in. And we'd like to find the volume of this, this uh, object. First, given that we drill this hole of radius capital R out of it. So if I can find the volume of this object when I've drilled a hole of radius capital R out of it, then I want to figure out what is the value of capital R so that I get exactly half of the original volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to let capital R be the radius of the hole. Okay. And part of this is to try to figure out, okay, what set of coordinates do I want to use? Do I want to use rectangular? Do I want to use cylindrical? Do I want to use spherical? What does the region look like? How can I set up the integral? So a lot of questions are going on here that we're going to need to know the answer to. One of the first things I'm going to look at is just what is our projection into the xy plane? In other words, what is the footprint? If I chose a z first integral, what would the footprint be? So that hole of radius r, when I drill it out, gives me a circle of radius capital R. And then the rest of the sphere projects down into this larger circular disk. And that is of radius 1. So this is our footprint. It's this shaded region here, which we call an annulus. So this is an annulus, which is our footprint. And so how can we describe this? Well, as I said, I'm probably going to want to do a z first integral to integrate over the region. So if we do a z first integral, I'm already committed to not doing spherical coordinates. Why have I avoided spherical coordinates here? Because I got to deal with this cylinder, that hole that I've drilled out in the middle. And to deal with that cylinder, Sure, theta can sweep out from 0 to pi, 2 pi. But the problem is with that rho value. Rho changes depending on the angle phi. So I need to try to figure out how to describe that cylinder in terms of rho and phi. That seems to be too much of a problem because the cylinder itself is very simple to describe in cylindrical coordinates. And the sphere itself is not so bad in cylindrical coordinates. So because of the presence of the cylinder, I'm thinking cylindrical coordinates is the way I'm going to go. So we'll go z first, and we'll go to cylindrical coords. Okay, so 1a, what is our footprint? We've already got an idea for that. It's our annulus. We'll come up with the integration plan next. What is 1b? What are our sides? What's 1c? What is our bottom and our top? And 2, what is our 2d region and our integration plan? So in this case, we're interested in the volume, so why don't we just do half of it? Why don't we just compute the upper half volume? In that case, the bottom and the top I can deal with on their 
on their own because when I think about doing only half the region, so just do upper half, that's nice because now it says that the bottom and the top, what are they? Well, Z is going to range over the values from 0 up to, well, pick any point and run up to, right up to being on the sphere. So right up to this sphere, which is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. But if I'm thinking about it in terms of cylindrical coordinates, that's the square root of 1 minus r squared. Okay, so bottom top, not so bad. What about our sides? Well, again, I think about the region. So I've got this curved, maybe I'll highlight these things in here. So I got this curved region here, we've dealt with that. I've got this bottom region, we've dealt with that. And so the last thing is this inner part of the drilled out circle, or the drilled out uh, cylinder. That inner portion, that's going to be one of those sides, because that red line segment lives entirely in that side. So that side is described by R is equal to big R. And that accounts for all three of the bounding surfaces for this region. The inner cylinder, the outer sphere, and the bottom plane. What's our plan for 2D, the 2D region? Well, that's the annulus down below. Our plan is R is going to be the values from capital R to uh, 1. And theta is going to sweep over the values from 0 to 2 pi. And so there we go. We've got all of our uh, inequalities set up for our limits of integration. So now we can go ahead and compute the volume of the full solid that is going to be twice the integral based on our setup because we said just do the upper half and we set that up and that was in terms of our bottom and top functions, so it's going to be twice the integral from theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, r, little r goes from big R to 1, and z goes from 0 to square root of 1 minus r squared. And this is a volume, so we're integrating 1 dv. dv, because we chose cylindrical coordinates, is r dz dr theta. And so there is our volume of the full solid set up using cylindrical coordinates. So let's go ahead and compute this. We've got 2. Notice there's no theta present, so I can again integrate the theta integral by, or evaluate the theta integral by itself. That becomes just a 2 pi, so immediately I get a 4 pi out front. We get an integral from big R to 1. The integral of z well, it's just r, and I'm integrating that with respect to z, so it's constant, so that becomes rz, and then I evaluate at the limits of integration. That simplifies down to r times the square root of 1 minus r squared dr. So there's our integral boiled down just, just to this. So if you think about how we would have evaluated it before, we would have used cylindrical shells. And we did a different method here. We integrated over the region using a triple integral. But we end up with the same integral. This integral is what we would have got from the cylindrical shells method as well. So now we can go ahead and compute this integral. So this is 4 pi. We get a 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves. And then I better throw a 2 thirds out front. And what else? So when I differentiate that, the 3 halves comes down, cancels with the 2 thirds to give me 1. I get a new half as, as an exponent. And then derivative of the inside becomes negative 2r. I only want the r, so I had better make sure I've got a negative, and then I can cancel out that 2, because I'd have to put a half in there. So I'll put a negative 1 third in front. And now again, let's just check. So I'm putting parentheses around here. I'm just checking, just doing a mental check. Is this thing I wrote down really the antiderivative of r square root of 1 minus r squared? Do the derivative, the 3 halves come down, cancels with the negative a third to leave me with negative a half, and then the derivative of in, the inside is negative 2r 
So the negative a half cancels the negative two, just looking at r out front. So yeah, it looks good. That goes from r to one. And so this becomes negative four pi by three. Plugging the one in gives me a zero, minus a one minus capital R squared, three halves. And so this is four pi by three, one minus capital R squared to the three halves. And so there is the value of our full sphere with the hole cut out of it. We want the value of R so that this volume, which I'll call V, so that the volume is equal to one half of the volume of a sphere of radius one, so that's one half of four thirds pi. All right, so let's check. What is the value of r that does this? Well, that means we want four pi by three, one minus r squared to the three halves has to be one half of four thirds pi. So we can cancel off the four thirds. And what we get is that one minus r squared is equal to and I'll take the two-thirds power of both sides, so that's one-half to the two-thirds. And then we can solve for capital R. R squared is equal to one minus one-half two-thirds, or R is equal to the square root of one minus one-half to the power of two-thirds. And that is approximately 0 0.6083. And so that is how big the hole should be. It should be about 60% of the original radius. So the original radius was 1, so we should drill about 0.6. And we will remove half of the volume if we do that. Alright, that's it for this section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.